Welcome to Zoom at Times TV, and here's your host, Anita Finley. Hello, everybody. I'm Anita Finley, of course, your host for Zoomer Times TV, and we have a great guest today. It's um, someone that I've never met before. His name's Greg Du Bois, and he is the store manager of the Big Boynton Beach Thrift Shop. It's the big one, and it's the famous one, and it's where people crowd crowds line up. So we're going to have some fun talking to him. So good morning, thank you for being with us, uh, Greg. Thanks for having me. So um, in asking Greg, I always ask everybody about where they came from, what they did before, but I was very impressed with what uh, what Greg was telling me. So so you actually, how how did you get into uh, working in retail as a kid. Is that when you started? Well, I actually started my first job out of college. Uh, went down to Fort Lauderdale, uh, Bowder College, mm -hmm. and I worked for Chess King. That was my first job ever in retail. Uh, Melville Corporation, uh, all men's clothing store, started there part-time as I was going to school as well. Uh, $3.60 an hour. <laughs> You were overpaid. <laughs> I still remember it, but it was, um, I just took a, a, a liking to it. And just like they say with retail, anything, either you like it or you hate it. There's no in between. Right. But I absolutely love it. And so then what happened? Uh, you went, where did you go from there? From Chess King, I went on to Bloomingdale's. I had a, uh, I was doing visual merchandising. And that's what my degree is in fashion merchandising uh, oh. with a minor in management. And I absolutely loved it. I had the Boynton Beach, I'm, I'm sorry, the Boca Raton, Bloomingdale's. I was there wow. a week. And then I was at PGA a week. And we just wow. did all the displays. A lot of fun, particularly right. Christmas time, a lot of fun. Did your mother get you interested in clothes? Oh, that's funny. Yes, she did. That is too <laughs> funny. Absolutely. Um, quick story. Incidentally, my mother was a, uh, a seamstress. And you would be blown away if you see some of my prom outfits. <laughs> it was just amazing. Uh, with my, my wedding, she made all of the bridesmaids dresses. Oh. Uh, she was just remarkable and a great seamstress. But yes, she's the one that got me into fashion. Is she still <laughs> alive? She died the year I came to Faith Farm, 2013. Oh, my. Well, our the memories are very Absolutely. important. That's, we all live with memories of our loved ones. And so, sure. and so somehow, you know, you're doing a lot of the stuff that she showed you. Well, that I always ask about the mothers because it seems mm. like so much influence. But so then tell me, um, so you got in trouble, I gather, with uh, either alcohol, drugs, something. And you were lucky to find Faith Farm, weren't you? Well, my story is a little bit different. Okay. Um, Faith Farm actually found me. Um, it was, I was working at um, Dollar Tree, um, as for mentioned when I said before I came here. And with the long hours at Dollar Tree, I had no work-life balance, none whatsoever. So what happened was, even in the search engine, I put weekends off. I didn't even put Faith Farm. I put no other retailer. I put weekends off. And I knew about Faith Farm. I knew what they were about. Um, but I never saw myself working there. <laughs> Incidentally, my brother came through this program in the early 80s. I was hired from the outside with no, you know, no drug or alcohol addiction. Uh, but what I can talk about and what I can give the guys here is a perspective coming from the family. So I know what it does to the family. It, it's, it's, it's really, really serious. But it's, um, I, I tell you, I started here looking for a job, turned into a career. Now it's my calling. I absolutely love it. We're so lucky to have you young. I, I'm sure your mother suffered a lot with your brother, but, but, sure. uh, but you were there to support everybody. And uh, absolutely. And good for you that you didn't have to go through any of that, but you you were one of the families and I've gone to a lot of the graduations and where it's really the family that's so 
uh, affected by all this. Absolutely. Absolutely. In such a profound way, it really is because it takes its toll. I, my mother had a lot of sleepless nights yep. um, as well as I did. We stayed on our knees constantly. They say when you feel like you can't stand anymore, you kneel. And that's exactly what we did. Um, even before I knew the book, it was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So it was we had that foundation and we leaned on our faith in those times of trouble. This is Greg Du Bois, and uh, this is really wonderful to have him talking for Faith Farm Ministries. Uh, uh, we hope that you will donate faithfarm.org, whether you go there and, and bring things that you want them to, you know, their thrift shop, or you want to go and buy things there. But it's it's really my favorite organization. I, I've asked people to leave them um, their money, people to leave money in their will, to, to donate money. Because it's a cause that you can see the value. It, it, you don't have to think about it. It's right there. And there's so many stories of success. So, so Faith Farm is really, one of my, is really my favorite. Not even one of my favorites. It's my favorite. That so awesome. let's, I, I just want to ask you a question. So you came out of the being a store. You came out of fashion. But now mm -hmm. you're a store manager with furniture and everything, right? Sure. That's right. That's right. It's... um. I tell you, it's it's still a part of retail, obviously, but it's so much more than that because when you're working in this type of environment, you are obviously a mentor. You become obviously a counselor. You wear a lot of different hats, but the most um, you mentioned about the graduations, that's the most rewarding part. That's the payday. That's yeah. the payday. <laughs> when you see the guys come in here broken like they are, yeah. and within 10 months to 12 months, how God has really transformed their life, given them a, a, a new beginning, if you will, the, the only thing that comes to mind, the only word I can use when I go home at e each night is rewarding. That's what it is for me. I agree. Uh, in fact, I've also gone to the yearly get togethers that they bring everybody back for, and they're very inspiring also. Oh, man, absolutely. <laughs> You're talking about the homecomings. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, those are exciting. And you eat yourself to oblivion. It's, it's yeah, I love it. <laughs> right. Cakes to pies, I absolutely love it. No, that's right. good times. Really, really <laughs> good times. <laughs> that's funny. So, so let me, though, go back to what you do there. So when things come in, mm -hmm. uh, are you the one that looks at it and tries to get it fixed up or decides where it should go? Is that your main, um, your main sure. responsibility? Sure. sure. I wear that hat as well. I do have some, um, some excellent counterparts um, in Sean and um, Sean is, with, is dealing with the as is department. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously do the whole store. We have him over as is. And then we have Quentin outside sales and I handle the mostly of the new furniture department. So we do, I do a lot of the buying, all of the buying for the new furniture department. Um, the merchandise, Ashley, right? Ashley. That's correct. And a, a few more business, but primarily Ashley, you're absolutely right. Um, we have, when the merchandise comes in off of the, off of the dock, We'll put it on the grass. We have a section that we put it on and we decide whether it's going to go to outside sales, um, inside sales. And that's the way that we price it, price it accordingly. But the idea, if someone comes into the store, because we have new furniture when they first come in, obviously we want a while. This one, I didn't expect this, you know, for new furniture for a thrift store. If you can't, if your pocketbook say that you can't afford new furniture, you go to as is, and you're going to find some gems over there that you won't believe. If you can't afford that, then you go to outside sales. So we have some for every income bracket here. That's actually so good. I've never heard that before, Greg. Mm -hmm. I, you know, anyone to describe how that works. I'm very pleased. So you have now you have clothing too. And Absolutely. so the clothing, you, you're a specialist in that. So how do you decide when things come in, you have to clean it, you have to do something with it and you have to probably toss some also. Sure. Sure. Well, we have a sorting in our back warehouse. 
absolutely anything that comes in new with a tag, that takes priority and goes into the store. We also have SD, we have eBay, we have Poshmark. It's built to try to make a footprint into that, that um, social media market as well. So if it's anything that's really, really high priced, like if we get Gucci, a Prada, or something like that, Louis Vuitton, obviously we want to get the best bang for our buck because um, we do have to support the men in the program. So it would go on the Poshmark or SDA or, or eBay. If it doesn't make it through that, then it makes its way to the store. And at that point, we merchandise, we colorize it. Um, inside the store, we have jackets, we have suits. I mean, you name it, we have it in that store. And we merchandise it accordingly. Oh, and I didn't know that. So if something is really valuable, because I know that sometimes things do come in and and, and you, some before you, or mm -hmm. I heard stories of things people didn't even know how valuable it, it was. Sure. And now you do certain kinds of jewelry and all. So you would now go and you market it on eBay or one of the other sale uh, internet sites and see if you can make some money from it. And then if you can't, you put it into the store. See, I'm learning so much from you. I thought I knew so much about Bay Farm. I love having you on, Greg. Good stuff. I'm happy. That's great. Okay. So uh, when when people then come in, uh, do they get to try them on? I don't know. Do you have dressing rooms? I don't even remember that. We do. We have four dressing rooms readily available, full length mirrors inside of each. Um, we have, um, we ask that you take about three garments. You leave your, your personals outside. We have an attendant there at the, at the counter. Um, yeah, just like a regular uh, boutique. That's what, that's the way that we designed it. We have mannequins, everything. Um, our sales professional that's in there right now, um, if you, particularly the guys that come in, if they don't know their size, uh, we've trained them to be able to measure um, how to tie a tie, we, um, to measure for a suit, to measure their pants, the outseam, the shirt, because a lot of guys that come into the program, they'll say, well, I'm a large. Okay, well, what is a large? You know, is that a 16, 16 and a half and a 34? 34 meaning the sleeve length. So we, we're getting them involved in all of that. So they're not just students in the program, when, particularly when it hits the sales floor, they're sales professionals. So Greg, I can see when people leave the program and you've had anything to do with it, they have a new career. They can actually go to some of the retail shops and, and start doing what you've taught them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I tell you, Anita, that's a perfect segue into what we call, we have a, it's a CWT. It's a comprehensive work training program. And what that does, we do that every Friday. Um, we have a new furniture at CWT every Friday. And I've taken their liberty to, to put the clothing room in there for that, re that very reason you just mentioned, so that they can translate out into the secular world and have some type of a skill that they can bring value to any company. Absolutely fabulous. Well, you know, it's interesting that I have, and I haven't shared this before with anyone. Now with you, it's, I just feel so relaxed. My husband uh, had very nice clothing, mm. tuxedos, things like that. And he passed away four years ago. I wear his t-shirts. I wear some of his regular long sleeve shirts, but I have some wonderful jackets and things that he wore. And I, I don't know, they're just hanging in the closet. I don't know mm. what it is. And I guess what I should do is bring them over there. I haven't made this, isn't that funny? Four mm. years, I haven't made this decision. What a blessing that would be. Look at you. That's great. That would be fantastic. Yeah. That really, really would. This is really the best program I've had with Bay Farm. <laughs> <laughs> this is very interesting. I'm getting help from you rather than trying to lead you somewhere because That's I what never it's all knew about. there was. I never knew there was someone like you there. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of faith and confidence in you just from the short time that we've met. So sure. Uh, so I guess what I ought to do, maybe what I would do, is just tell you I'm coming, put it That'd in my great. car, awesome, and bring these things to you and. Um, yeah, because it doesn't make sense for him just to be sitting. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought, I know he's not coming back, but I don't know what I thought. Um, 
So I won't give you the little the t-shirts and things I can wear. And I sure. actually even wore the tuxedo once because, oh, man. Sure. yeah, so I don't want to give you that. But there are beautiful jackets that he, mm. he dressed nicely. He was in also. I'm going to think about all this now. Uh -huh. That would be great. Would right. Be great. <laughs> so let's talk about Faith Farm. We want to get a phone number here for everybody to call. And the number that um, I have is, a, if you if you want it, I guess it's for a pickup, but you can mm -hmm. call Let's see, we have, um, it's 863-763-4224. Is that, maybe that's Fort Lauderdale. Where is it that? It is, it is. Okay. Ours is 561-737-2222. Okay. And um, people can call there if they want, but they can just go there and tell us your hours again. We're open um, Monday through Saturday, uh, nine to six. The dock, whether you want to donate, is open till 4.30. All you do is drive around to the dock. You back in. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to get out of your car. We unload it. We give you a tax certificate that you can take to your, um, your CPA, your tax preparer, to, to, um, as a tax write-off. And you'll be on your way. But when I've come, I go to the front a lot and drop it. You have a big bin there. We have a big bin in the front as well. And after hours, we still have that bin there, and we have a truck. If you have large items, that you can you can place them in the truck as well. Well, and I've told this to some of our other guests from Faith Farm that uh, we had a piano that was my mother's, mm -hmm. and uh, we lived in the second floor of our home before mm -hmm. we sold it. And I asked them, you know, could I, could you get the piano down? Because that was, you know, it wasn't a baby grand, but it was kind of heavy sure. so nothing would do but two or three guys came they were so careful they took it down and I donated it to Faith Farm so it is the piano that sits in your I guess the, the hall sure Isn't that it has something? my mother's name on it Dorothy Sperling so I have a lot of commitment there oh that's awesome thank you so much for your generosity that <laughs> well really it's really my nice. pleasure that is really really nice so let's talk about, um, and I know that you're not probably as involved in the women's program, correct? but I, I know that uh, it kind of went down during COVID, but is it getting, and is it going up a little bit more now with more women involved? Well, the women's program, as I understand it, don't quote me, but I believe they top out at 20. Um, obviously it's totally, totally separate from the men's program. Uh, Ms. Joanne Green does a fabulous job with the, yes. with the women over there, uh, along with her counterparts, um, Tisa. Um, they do an absolutely fabulous job. And again, once those uh, graduations come up, your feet are flooded, really. You yeah. need a, a box of Kleenex yes, <laughs> because true. you're so invested in the lives and what God has done in their lives and how they stand up behind that podium and, and, and give their testimony. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Absolutely it's, amazing. It is. It, you, you, you feel so badly for what they had to go through, but sure. so happy that they made it through. And they, they're an inspiration to a lot of the people, of course, who sure. are there. And the other thing, as you bring that up, is uh, it's such a wonderful buddy system. Besides the women, usually women would do this, but men don't usually do this as easily. Boy, they're brothers there. You can see them helping each yeah. other and pushing mm -hmm. them on to keep mm -hmm. going and I love that. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we say it all the time. You're my brother in Christ. And that's what's really it's about. It's about giving back, uh, particularly with the guys, the new ones that come into the program. Um, they have, like, I guess you would call the elder statesmen, uh, the ones that graduated and want to give back. They stay on for another year of service um, as a mentor to those ones that's coming in. And it's a great, great system because it's hard. The program is really hard. I, I, was, I, would, I would not be truthful saying that it was easy. Anybody could do it. But just like that, that saying goes, anything of value takes some effort. So you got to put in the time. You got to put in the work. And we give you the tools here. I wish it was a magic dust that we can sprinkle, but <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, it's not. Right. But I mean, we give the word of God yeah, and it penetrates 
And for the ones that are successful in it, I mean, it's, it's a joy when they come back or when you get that phone call, Greg, I'm doing great. I just wanted to hear your voice. Uh, meet my new daughter. Here's my wife. It's just, that's what it's all about. So this is Greg and it's DeBose. Is that how I pronounce DeBose, it? DeBose, like DeBose. those speakers. Yeah, Greg DeBose. And he is the store manager in Boynton Beach. And you can see he's a lot more. I'm sure they don't have anyone like you in Fort Lauderdale or Okeechobee. So I'm sure you're a great, you know, advisor and mentor. Well, let me go back to your brother a minute. Is he okay? Sure. You know what? My brother is. He's doing fine. He is in um, Tampa as we speak. Um, he's a, a uh, paint and body guy by trade. So he makes a lot of money fast. Uh, been doing it over, what, 40 years? Really, really good at it. And... Um, He's doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say. Thanks for asking. Is he older or younger? Exactly 10 years older than me. Oh, <laughs> so you're the baby. I'm the baby. I have a, a older sister who's seven years older. She's in Atlanta and, uh, and, and my brother. Okay. And do you have a family yourself? I do. <laughs> Uh-oh. I have uh, my lovely wife, Regine. Um, we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Thank How you wonderful. so much. Thank you so much. She is a sweetheart, the love of my life. Um, we met in college and, um, <laughs> and we have two beautiful daughters, both of them on, on scholarship for basketball. Oh my. my. <laughs> I'm, I'm pinching myself, Anita. <laughs> I'm pinching myself. My um, youngest is at the um, Greensboro College in North Carolina. And she, like I said, she has a scholarship there. And my oldest is um, at the University of New Haven in Connecticut. Oh, my heavens. Yeah. And are you, I, because you're sitting down, are you very tall? Um, yes. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> so, I mean, are your no. girls tall or just good? They are. They are, it's my wife's side of the family. Oh. <laughs> they, that's where they get their height. But of course they get their athleticism from me. Right. <laughs> and their good looks, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, my wife is a looker though. I, I, I can't, I, she, she's a looker. She yeah, really well, is. we're going to get you this uh, video so you have to show it to her. So be careful <laughs> what you say, right? <laughs> that's right. That's too funny. Well, you know, Greg, um, I was thinking about what you said and how you started at $3 and 25 cents or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that time, that was not unusual. I remember that I worked at the art museum at the University of Miami and I made $12,000 a year and wow. tried to live on that. But it was in 19, uh, I don't think, I think it was in the 1960s. So, you know, things all changed, but that Correct. wasn't very much. But retail has never paid very much. Correct. Correct. But, um, but you loved it and that was good. And I love the story about your mother and how successful, did she learn all that from her mother? That's exactly right. She absolutely did. Boy, you're good, she did. <laughs> well, she did, she learned it from her mother. Yeah, she, you, see, she could draft her own hear, patterns and everything. See, we don't hear those stories anymore. Those, sure. that, those are the beautiful stories and I hope that either you've told that, those stories to your daughters or you've written them down somewhere because we don't want to lose those things. Mm -hmm. I agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah, we share it um, along with my wife with her stories. And um, we do. We're, we're a close-knit family. And I thank God for it. So let me ask you, but you're not one of the ones that live on campus. Correct. I am not. Go I ahead. do not live on campus. I um, come in every day at um, 830. Um, and I alternate the schedule some dates, some weeks I leave at five, some weeks I leave at six. Um, I schedule that with the uh, <laughs> schedule that with my counterpart. But it's um, again, it's Anita, I can't say it enough. And I know I'm probably using overload for this word, but it's, it's so rewarding working here. It really, really is. Now, you said so rewarding. I yes. think it should be soul rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right. It's so, so rewarding. Re I exactly. like it. I'm going to yeah. steal that one. That's okay, good. Okay, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <That's we're>... good. <laughs> I like well, it. Because it's really, it's really true. 
And um, sure. you have usually there are 400 that you can accommodate. The, the count was down the last time I spoke with someone mm-hmm. about Bay Farm. Is it still down? It is. Uh, and that's that's total bids throughout the, the three farms. Now, okay. here we top out at 130. And right now we are down. Um, and it's a lot of contributing factors, I'm sure. Obviously, the pandemic has a lot to do with it. Um, I believe they since cut the additional unemployment. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it as well. The extra $300 or $600 that they were giving them to support their habits. So that's right. Support that the of late. Now of late, we're starting to see um, some penetration as far as getting some students in. Yeah, you know that's that's the big problem, and we hear so often that it's not the students usually who call. Unfortunately, it's the parents or the family yes. members. But it, that's not the way it can go. It's got to be you know, the other. Your brother, go back to him. Mm-hmm. How did he find Faith Farm? Well, again. My mother, you said it, you said it. But even even at that, you have to have a willingness to change. You have to have that innately in you that said enough is enough. You have to get tired of being sick and tired. You have to hit rock bottom um, before you can come into a place like this. Like I said, it's it's, it's extremely hard. It's tough, you know, in a dormitory type setting with, um, you know, 80 some odd guys in there you know, a lot of different personalities floating around. So it, it can be tough, but it's worth it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, worth it's it. really great. I'm, I'm so happy that we had this conversation. So I guess we've run out of time and we're going ah. to, uh, but you've been a delightful guest. You've been, actually, you've been unique. We've not had anyone like <laughs> you before. And so it's been wonderful, Greg. And I'm just going to thank everybody for watching and, And uh, we'll catch up with um, someone from Faith Farm again. So thank you, Greg, very much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. If you or someone you know is having an addiction problem, there's a place that can help. It's called Faith Farm Ministries. What's important for those without addiction is that Faith Farm Ministries is supported by their three amazing thrift stores and by donations. Most people are not aware of the wonderful work they do for our fellow citizens. The way you can help is to make sure that their work continues. It's easy. Bring unwanted items to their locations during the day or put them in their drop boxes. Then, be sure to go and buy new or used items from their thrift stores. They're located in Fort Lauderdale, Boynton Beach, and in Okeechobee. Faith Farm Ministries makes the entire process a win-win to help and to get help, maybe even for yourself. For information, call 561-737-2259. That's Faith Farm Ministries, 561-737-2259. Or go online to www.faithfarm.org.